Hi, my name is Brandon Graisley. I teach high school computer science, and today we're going to talk about how to implement a stack structure using the Java programming language. So let's talk about what a stack is, first of all. It's a data structure that uh, can store information in a linear fashion, one uh, element, one after another. Uh, and it has a special, a few special properties. First of all, you can only ever see what's on the very top of a stack. So, for example, here is a stack with one object, one element in it, uh, and the value of it, if we want to peek at it, we can sort of turn that one over and take a look and see what that element is. And if I want to add another element to the stack, it's called pushing. I will push another element onto the top, and you can see that there there is another element down there, but we can't take a look at it, but we can take a look at the one that is now on the top, and once again, that's called peeking. So pushing is putting an object onto the stack, peeking is looking at the top, and popping is called removing and, if you want, looking at the object that is on the top. So if I pop both objects off of this stack, I still have a stack there. It happens to be an empty stack, and so you can't really see anything. So let me push a few more objects onto that stack. Push, 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 push. I can pop. I can pop again. And at any time, we can also check the uh, size of the stack. I don't need to do that by counting. I can just sort of keep track and notice that I've, I've got three there right now. Push, push, push. That should be six. Push, there is seven. And uh, if I peek at the top one, there's that value. And uh, one more thing I want to be able to do is empty the stack. That is, get rid of everything in it all at once without looking at it. So those are all the stack operations. Push, pop, peek, check the size, and empty it. So here I am in NetBeans, the development environment that I use to write in Java. Uh, I have a package called Data Structures, which has two different uh, classes in it right now. The first class is the int stack class, which will, um, that is the stack structure we'll be using, and int stack element is going to be the wrapper class that holds all of the different values that will be in the stack. So let's start by listing out uh, the different things that we'll want to be able to do. We are going to want to be able to push a new value into, onto the stack, pop a value off of the stack to retrieve it, peek at the top value that's in the stack, check out the size, and also empty the stack. These are the different things that we're going to need to be able to do. Um, now to be able to do that, we are going to need these int stack elements. We're going to move over here and write this one right now. So the int stack element class, these objects are just wrapping around int values, integer values. So they will need a couple of variables. The first variable it needs is uh, a field variable for its value, the value that it represents. So if it's the number five, the, va the variable value will store five. Uh, it's also going to need a private int stack element reference to the next value in the list. So the, uh, the int stack element is going to have to keep track of the sort of the object that is below it in the stack. So you might, you might call it underneath or down or something like that. But next is a pretty good value, or, or variable name rather. When you want to make a new int stack element, you will call this method public int stack element. You'll need to give it two pieces of information. The first is an int called the value, which I'll call value, and then the other is an int stack element to say which is the one underneath it. I'm going to use uh, under as another variable name. Now you'll notice this uh, variable name value, I have used it twice. It's used here, it's also used up here. And NetBeans is very clever, it is highlighting those separately for me. This one is the field variable value, and this one is a local variable parameter to this method int stack element. And so these are actually different, and if I want to refer to this one, which I will have to in a moment, I'm going to have to use a special keyword. So two things I want to do, I want to store this value into this variable, and store this value into this variable. So the way we reference the field variable is we use the keyword this. This refers to the current object, and if I put this dot value, it's the current object's value variable. And I can do that inside of the in stack element constructor because uh, this is a private variable and it can be accessed from anywhere inside of this class. If I was outside the class, I would not be able to use uh, in stack element dot value. So this dot value equals value. Now value here refers to the parameter. This dot value refers to 
the field variable, and NetBeans is highlighting that for me to show what I'm doing. Uh, the second thing I want to do, next is equal to under. I did it again. There we go. Next is equal to under, and now this int stack element will be correctly uh, sequenced in with the other objects that are in the stack. Okay, we're going to need a few other um, uh, methods, though. We need some accessor methods, some getters and setters. So these are all going to be public. So public void set value. Maybe I want to be able to change the value in a, in a uh, stack element. Int value, and then once again, this dot value equals, oh, let's try that again, equals value. Public, I want to be able to get a value. So int is the return type, get value. Uh, no parameter required for that. All it does is returns this dot value. I can type this dot value, or I, you'll see I don't actually need this dot. I can just put value because uh, there is no other value variable inside of this method. And let's see, I might also want to be able to get and set the next. So public void set next, and that'll be an int stack element. Call it under again. And uh, this dot next, or just next, equals under. And public int stack element equal, uh, sorry, public int stack element uh, get next, no parameters, return next. Okay, so we have it all put together here. Let's just review quickly. We have two attributes, two field variables. We need to know the value that the stack element is holding and its reference to the next one in the list. We have a constructor that grabs those two pieces of information and stores them in those variables. And then we have two getters and setters to be able to update and retrieve the uh, value and the next element. Let's just save that and move back over to our in stack. Okay, well, let's uh, start implementing. We have these methods that we want to implement, but before we begin that, we're going to need to have the structure of the stack itself. So it's going to need a uh, private int for its current size. That will start at zero. And it will also need a private uh, int stack element that refers to the top of the stack. It needs to know where what is the top value in the stack. And then the, the top value in the stack will refer to the ones that are underneath it in, in turn. Okay, now we need a uh, constructor, public int stack. When you want to make a new int stack, all you need to do is say, make one. Its size will be zero, and the top value is null. There's nothing there. So this is not zero, or not an empty value. It is the value null, which means there is no object there. It refers to no object. Uh, top can refer to an object later. If it doesn't now, we use the keyword null, and we use that lots in object-oriented programming. So get used to seeing that and checking for it. Okay, let's try pushing. If I want to put a new object onto the stack, we're going to need a method for that. We're going to call that public void because it does not need to return any value. And we're just going to call it push. It's going to take an int. We're going to call it value as a parameter. So put a new value onto the stack. So push uh, seven onto the stack. Well, we're going to do a couple of things. One is we're going to increase the size of the stack by one. So size plus plus, or we could do size equals size plus one. Either one of those will work. Then we're also going to need to actually put it there. So I'm going to do this in a couple of steps. So the first thing I want to do is make a new int stack element. I'm going to call it new top equals new int stack element. And it's going to use uh, take value as a parameter and the old top as another parameter. So let's just see what this is doing. We're going to make a new variable called new top. It's going to make a new int stack element. It's going to use the parameter value as it's that object's value. And it's going to use top, the current top, as the next object. That is the one that will be underneath it in the stack. This will become our new top object in the stack. And then uh, top, that variable, is going to need to refer to the new top as the new top of the stack. Whew, okay. So let's just review that one more time. We increase the size by one. We, we construct a new element that will be the top by pointing it at the one underneath it. And then we reassign the top reference, 
which is part of the int stack structure, to point to the new top object, which is now the top most object in the stack. Okay, let's go on to popping. When I want to retrieve the value from the top, public, vo uh, not void now, we're going to use uh, int as a return type. Now you'll notice we're not returning int stack element as a return type because the user doesn't actually see that. The user just has an int stack which they push and pop uh, values onto and off of. So they want to get the int value back anyway. They don't care about how we've wrapped it up. So public int pop. And it takes no parameters because it's always just the top value that's in the list. Um, if the uh, if the stack is empty, this shouldn't work. So, uh, but we don't really have a good way to uh, warn the user that there's a problem. So we're going to kind of gloss over that for now. But in practice, we would do something a little bit better here. Uh, so I'm um, supposing that the pop method should be called at this time. What will we need to do? Well, the current size will need to be reduced by 1. So size equals size minus 1. And then we're also going to need to get that value. So let's first of all, let's grab the int stack element from the top. We're going to call it the old top this time. And how do we do that? Well, we need to get a reference to the value, that it, or not the value, but the int stack element that is currently at the top. Well, thankfully, we have a variable for that. It's called top. So old top is a new variable name, but it's pointing to the same thing as the top variable. Then what we'll do is we'll reassign top. Let me scroll down here a little. Top is now going to be equal to the old top's next reference, the one that's underneath it. So I'll do get next. So get the next value, the one that's underneath it, and let's reassign that to be the, the new top or reassign top's um, pointer. So we've sort of, uh, that, that uh, int stack element that, that was on top before, we've sort of stuck it into this temporary variable old top, and we've chopped the, the top part off of the stack. And the last thing that we need to do is return the correct value, which will be old top's value, old top.get value. Okay, so we've put the old top into a variable, we've fixed the where top is pointing, and we've returned the correct value from the old top of the list of the stack. And we did remember to reduce size by one. That's good. Okay, peaking. Public int peak. Let's take a look at the top of the list. It's actually going to be very similar to what's up here. We don't need to reduce the size. We don't need to reassign anything. All we need to do is this last bit. I'll just copy and paste that. Not old top though, just top. Oops, don't want to be in Arabic, sorry. Top dot get value, and that's all. Size is equally straightforward. Public int size, no parameter required. It's going to return the current size, or this dot size if you like. Now public int, uh, sorry not int, public void empty. If you want to empty out the stack, what do you do? Well, we can say size equals zero, and we'll say top equals null, which you'll notice if I scroll up, is the same thing that we did up here in the constructor. Size equals zero, top equals null. That makes the stack empty. Now those other int stack elements that are hanging around out there, those are still just like hanging out in the void, but they're not going to interfere with anything. They all just kind of refer to each other. And once nothing is referring to them, that is the, scroll up here, the top variable doesn't refer to them anymore, Java will get rid of them and clean them up. Once they're called orphaned, there's no way to get to them anymore. Now you might be wondering, well, what happens when we get to that bottom element in the stack and we've popped off the last element? There's this line right here, top equals old top dot get next. Well, the, the very first element that goes onto the stack, when we push the first element on the stack here, when there are currently zero elements, and we do int stack element, we'll make a new one with value and top, this one here, top, will be null. And so the very last element that we pop off will have a next value of null. And so that is all going to work out just fine. So give this a try. Write this up. We're all finished here now. Go ahead and type this in, write this up, 
and then you can test it by using maybe uh, a, write a main method and uh, create a stack and push some uh, push some values into it and pop them off and print them and so on. Do some testing and see how it works with uh, zero, one, two, and and more values in your stack. Okay, I hope that has been helpful. If you have any questions, of course, you can get a hold of me uh, using the comments below. And if you're in my course, you know how to get a hold of me in the other ways. Thanks a lot.